This is part four in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair and partially restore this MADAS 9E mechanical calculator. In the previous videos I cleaned up the main chassis, uh, stripped down the carriage, cleaned it, lubricated it, uh, carried out a few repairs on the uh, carriage and uh, in particular one of the number wheels was broken, it had the little um, threaded uh, shaft sheared off. So uh, I've repaired that. I did video that repair but unfortunately uh, my camera uh, sometimes deletes video for no apparent reason so I've uh, lost that but uh, all I did was put the number wheel in the lathe, drill a uh, 1.5 millimeter hole about halfway down the center and then I machined a small threaded shaft with a smooth end and I loctited that into the hole I drilled and that uh, now works fine. So I've checked that all the wheels are in the correct locations and um, as you can see the zero arm now moves across freely for both the main number select and the intermediate numbers and uh, it is important to check that. The, the number wheels uh, there's one of two types and um, there's one where the gear, the reset gear is close to the top of the wheel and one where the reset gear is lower down and the reason they do that is because it halves the distance that this lever has to move when resetting uh, and yet still allows the number to rotate when you release the lever um, but if you get them in the wrong location you'll find that when this lever is released they won't rotate and that's fairly common for all these different types of calculators. And uh, as I said before, although they tend to have very different looking mechanisms, they all operate on almost identical principles. So once you've figured out what each of the parts actually is, then in general you can uh, figure out how it's supposed to be working and uh, hence uh, start fault finding. So what I want to do in this video, you can see I've refitted the carriage. I haven't um, refitted the front clamps in case I need to raise it. If the machine jams, I want to be able to just pop the carriage up and it should uh, allow me to uh, free off the jam. And um, I want to get the calculator mechanics working before I start hooking up the motor drive. I don't want to start um, putting a motor drive through this. If it's going to jam up, I want to get it working first. I've uh, lubricated all the moving parts and um, I can now see if it actually moves more freely. I couldn't properly turn the drive wheel before, it was very stiff and uh, get halfway through a cycle and then stop. And also I couldn't move the carriage at all but the carriage is now nice and free to slide, it moves very easily and uh, we'll see if it turns. So what we'll do is we'll start off by um, doing some simple additions and subtractions. So we'll put it into um, addition mode. So that's across to the right. And to figure this out, I'm just looking at the uh, text that's on the front panel. I'm leaving the front panel off for now because I need to be able to get in uh, inside to the mechanism. Um, but what we can do is set the uh, gears manually to approximate locations uh, to allow us uh, number entry. The way these calculators are normally laid out is you have a big number along the top, so that's either the results or the remainder for division, and what you do is you set uh, two numbers. You set the number at the top, which is your starting number, and then you set the number at the bottom. So either you zero a top number, set a number you want to add to that number, and uh, then just cycle the machine or you set the first number of a pair you want to add together in the uh, top number, the second in the bottom number, cycle the machine and it will add them together. Or in subtract mode you set the number you want to subtract from in the top and the number you want to subtract in the bottom, cycle the machine and it should um, subtract the bottom number from the top and leave the result in the top. The intermediate number is normally a count of operations. So for example, for division, division is nothing more than a series of uh, repeated subtractions and each time round it will count up by one. And so the um, middle number becomes the result and the top number ends up as the remainder. It kind of depends on the way the machines arranged, but normally the big the biggest number is the results for things like multiplication 
uh, simply because if you multiply two smaller numbers, you end up with a bigger number. So it makes sense that the top number is normally the result. OK, so I think I've got this in addition mode. I'm going to set the uh, gears down here manually, so that's approximately 1. So it should now add 10 to the results up here, which is currently 0. So uh, in normal operation, what we would do, let's move this across so you can see the gear wheel, is uh, the motor drive uh, would be stationary. You push this knob down, it's on a, like a free wheel bearing so it doesn't start spinning around as soon as the motor starts up. Uh, when you push this down it operates a big lever which does several things and one of those is to engage and switch on the motor. The motor is normally attached through this gear, come to this uh, free wheels when the machine's not running uh, an operation and um, when you push the plunger down it also engages this and locks it to the drive shaft. And in theory, if the motor is spinning, it should then go through and complete the process. So what I can do without the motor is just push this down and then start turning the gear wheel. And once it starts turning, it will stay in that uh, drive mode until it completes the cycle. So I've got uh, 10 sets, and we should end up with a result of 10 if it's working. So I'll press the plunger down. The motor would normally start up. It would start turning this, and firstly, it's much easier to turn than it was before. This, it requires almost no force at all to get this to go around, so we'll keep going. We've now got a 1 appeared in the second column, and it should now take us through to the end of the cycle and switch the motor off, which it has done. And we've ended up with a value of uh, 10 in the top, which is good. That's uh, 10 uh, or 0 plus 10. And we've got a value of 1 in the intermediate, uh, so that's one operation. If we do the same thing again, I'll push the plunger down again and start turning. This should add 10 to our uh, previous uh, total of 10, so it should give us 20. And it's now showing 20 in the top. It's showing 2 in the bottom, so 2 operations, and um, then it completes. So it looks like addition is working. I'll just run uh, another one, but this time I'll put this one into what I think is probably uh, the 2 position. It should now add 210 to 20. And we've ended up with a value of 230, which is correct, and 3 in the intermediate because we've carried out three operations. Okay, so for um, addition, it seems to be working. I'll have to test every column, of course. Uh, the main complication in, in this system so we have these stepped drums that I described in a previous video. The main complication is because of the need for carry or borrow, depending if you're adding or subtra uh, subtracting. Bear in mind that multiplication and division simply does uh, repeat the operations. So division is just repeating uh, subtractions and multiplication is just repeating um, additions. So as I said, these wheels up here are for the carry operations. We need to make sure that uh, when we start working on bigger numbers that the carry operations work successfully to uh, show that these are all uh, successfully rotating and doing their job. OK, so I'll switch the machine into subtract mode. Zero the intermediate. Move the lever across into subtract. I'll enter a value in the final zero at the top and enter a value of 1000 and I'll set a, a value of what I think is 10 on the uh, bottom number and when we cycle the machine now it should subtract 10 from 1000. And it's finished the cycle and we have um, a value of 990 in the uh, top number and a value of 1 in the intermediate. We'll do the same thing again, so it should subtract 10 from 990. We now have uh, 980 showing and a value of 2 in the intermediate. So that appears to be working. I'll just run it a couple times more to make sure it's consistent. And sure enough, we have 960 and four operations. I'll just change the number, put that where I think two should be. So we'll now try and subtract 
210 from 960. And it's now reading 750, which is correct. So addition and subtraction seem to be working. Uh, this is where it gets more complicated. Uh, when we're doing division and multiplication, then it's a, a repetition of um, operations. And the way the machine operates is to put the, you put the carriage into the um, starting location depending on the number of decimal places that you're working with, which is where it gets complicated in using these because you have to keep track of um, where your decimal places are. That's why you have these decimal point sliders that uh, uh, you can see in the background there. And um, you then move the carriage across to the start position after entering the two numbers you want to work on. And the machine should work on each column, move to the next column, do the same operation on that, move to the next. And uh, so, for example, with division, it will keep subtracting um, one of the column numbers uh, from each column until you get an, an overflow. It then re-adds the number, moves on, moves the um, carriage on to the next number and repeats that until it gets to the end of the um, calculation. So some numbers can take a very long time to um, to complete. So for example, if you set one million in the top and one in the bottom, it would require a million operations to actually carry out that uh, uh, calculation, which is why they tend to have um, a, ca a divide cancel um, function. Otherwise, um, the machine would have to cycle for a very long time if you accidentally enter a number that you don't want to um, to actually operate on. Uh, or worse still, if you uh, try and divide by zero, the machine would run indefinitely, so uh, you need some way to cancel that. Uh, so what we'll do now is uh, try and figure out um, if this machine works in multiply mode. Unfortunately, I don't have a user or a service manual for this, and the multiply and divide operations are normally much more complex, simply because the machine has to go into a mode of operation, stay in that mode until it's finished, and then uh, terminate the function. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just move the camera across and zoom in on this area. This is the bit we're interested in for these operations. You can imagine um, down this end, all it's going to be doing is repeatedly uh, adding or subtracting depending on whether we are multiplying or dividing. And um, what I'll do is move the carriage across so that uh, we can see more clearly what we're doing. Uh, I'll leave the numbers set as they are. We've got 10 in the uh, lower number and 750 in the top. So what I want to start off by doing is trying to do a division. So I'll move the camera so we can see that part of the machine more clearly. Okay, so as I said, I don't have the manual for this, either the user or the service manual, and I believe some parts are missing from this. You've got this gear here, and it's got a, an indicator wheel on it. And this indication um, shows through a hole on the uh, front panel that's uh, marked as automatic division. And there's another arrow that goes across that indicates that this lever should be in this position for division. Uh, I can see there's, some, there's something wrong down here. There's I think some parts missing. And what I can see now it's clean is there is a little slot here for, I think there should be a circlip. Uh, that stops this from wandering off and that means that this must rotate um, with uh, the machine when it's cycling through a multiply or division and I can also see that on this uh, extended boss there is a cam and when it's in its proper location this gear meshes with the gear that's on this shaft and the cam will operate on this assembly up here which is free to slide back and forth and so I can take this out of the way I think this is just to cancel the division so it should work without that fitted and so it appears that this cam is going to operate on either this face of this um, lever or this face and they're stepped you probably can't see it on the camera but this half is further back than this half and it's about the difference is about the height of the cam, so I'm assuming that in one position, that's when it's across to the right where it is now, this will not operate, in fact it won't, it will miss 
the uh, lever entirely so as this rotates it's not going to do anything with this lever in this location and there's a raised lip on this end and it's on a stop so I think what this is for is when the carriage comes across and the, the end of multiply or divide is when the carriage is in the final column position and I think what happens as the carriage comes back I've got a feeling it's going to hit this push it across and move this part of the lever across so that the cam then engages with it pushes it up and I think that's what's going to cancel the um, divide or multiply uh, there's obviously something missing here so um, what I'll do is I'll try running the machine we should be in divide mode now and uh, we'll see what goes on down here so I'll just cycle the machine manually I'm doing exactly the same, I'm pushing the plunger and rotating the gear and I can see there's a stop under here that uh, runs on the edge of this gear and we'll see what happens as it moves further across I'm, I'm expecting this shaft to start to rotate Okay, and so nothing happened. This did free up and nothing moved, so I think something somewhere is stuck. Okay, so this frees off the operation when it moves across. This resets the mechanism at the end. This doesn't seem to be doing anything at all, so I think this top plate is supposed to move up. You can see there's a recess here, so it's obviously supposed to move. Let's just see if it's stuck. I'll try rotating the machine again. I'll apply a little bit of pressure, see if that, and that does indeed then pop up. So that's now popped up. It's possible that it's, there's a little kind of wear mark in uh, this slot, so I think it might have been sticking on that. So we'll keep rotating and we are now getting rotation of this shaft and this indicator wheel. And it's gone, it's moved the, um, the, the clockwise, anti-clockwise bar up. We'll keep rotating and it should move the carriage across if it's, and indeed we are now moving the carriage. but it's terminated the operation, so it should have carried on in that mode until um, the carriage hit this. It's not supposed to cancel, I don't think, until the carriage gets across to this point and pushes this so that the cam can push this up. So it shouldn't disengage until this moves up. So I'll just move the camera in a bit closer so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. We've got this wheel here that's engaged on a gear that's on this shaft and we saw that this shaft starts to rotate when it's um, performing a, a division and the cam is either going to hit this face of this plate or it's going to fall into this recess so in other words when it's when this is in its current location the cam won't do anything but when this gets pushed across then the cam will push it up uh, as it rotates and I think this is pushed across by the carriage at the end of the cycle so the question is why is this not moving up at the beginning of a cycle ok we have a lever here that's also there for some purpose and there are witness marks on this portion and there's a slot on the plate underneath but there's nothing in the slot I'm just going to try cycling the machine again and see if something comes up through that hole And it does, we've got a lever that's popped up through there, so that seems to have put it into division mode, but it's popped back down again. Okay, so we'll try that again. I'll push this back up. We have the lever that's come up through here to stop this falling back down. is moving across 
Now this should stay in this mode, so I shouldn't cancel it. So I'm going to try and find out why this is cancelling. There's a lever down here that just seems to be flopping freely about. So. And it's ended the operation again. So obviously something amiss, and I've got a feeling it's whatever's missing off here that's um, preventing it from staying in the uh, correct mode. There are significant wear marks on this post, so I'm sure something should have been on here. There are no additional holes in the case, either the front panel or the uh, outer case, so there are no controls missing that uh, would operate on this. And there is a hole at the top, so that could well be for a, a split pin or something to uh, hold something in place on, uh, on this uh, shaft. So obviously something missing off here, so I'll need to try and figure out um, what's going on here. Uh, there's another slot up here, so I don't know if there's another um, lever missing, but um, what I'll do is I'll have a look at this uh, and uh, try and figure out what's going on. I think this plate is also sticking. Um, it's, there's supposed to be a slot here, and it's, uh, it's worn, so there's a, like a, a detent in it, and I think that's what's stopping this plate moving up when it's supposed to. There's a very light spring on this, and uh, I think when we start the cycle, I think this is supposed to move up like that and it's not it's uh, sticking because of this uh, little uh, detent that's worn so we might have to take this plate off and uh, see if we can't do something about um, removing that uh, detent perhaps uh, put a bit of weld in there and grind it uh, smooth but then this does seem to be flopping about fairly freely there's nothing that seems to be actively controlling this so um, as I say, there's obviously something missing. I'll try and figure out what's going on and then uh, get back on camera and see if we can figure out the best way to resolve the problem. Okay, well hopefully you can see this. Um, what I've found is this plate, I said there were some witness marks on this plate and it looks like this lever that's poking up through the hole. It was coming up through the hole but it wasn't coming up as high as it currently is. And so I noticed that there's a kind of a notch um, several millimetres down this lever and I think it's supposed to come up high enough to sit in its current location so this lever falls into this um, position and um, it prevents this uh, lever from dropping back down again and in this position if I carry on turning the machine you'll see that it is continuously staying in the um, division mode and the what the number wheels are doing now is um, repeatedly subtracting 10 from the total and the total set at like 10 million or something so it's going to go on indefinitely um, but it's now staying in the division mode and it's uh, I think what's going to happen is when the carriage comes across and hits this lever then it's going to allow the uh, this lever to be pushed up so it's going to allow the cam to push this up which is going to push this lever up so I'll do this and we'll see it's got to the end of uh, travel it's going to push this up it's very tight it was very tight getting in I think that's what the problem is and then when it's in this position it's released the um, the cycle so to speak so it then allows the machine to complete its cycle so this time round it should terminate the operation and we can see that lever's gone back down and it's now finished cycling so I'm still turning the gear but the machine's disengaged it thinks it's finished the division so I think that's the problem and I'll start it going again and if you're watching this hole you'll see the lever pop up initially so I'll push the um, button down you can see the levers come up but it hasn't come up far enough to allow this lever to move down into the slot and I think that's what's supposed to happen so I need to find out why this lever um, the one that's poking through this hole isn't uh, coming high enough. It might just be there's an adjustment uh, required on the end here. So I'll have a look at that and then uh, we'll try and figure out what's going on. Okay, I'm making some progress. The lever on the side here that wasn't uh, coming up high enough was just jammed at the bottom. It's a very tight pivot and I freed that up, lubricated it. And when I now press the button we're in uh, divide mode you'll see this plate here is supposed to capture that lever 
um, but it wasn't, it was just flopping, but this lever was just flopping about. So this spring was going over to this point. It didn't seem to make any sense because it doesn't do anything, um, just cause it to uh, flop around. Now obviously there's supposed to be a spring of some sort on this, but I don't think it's supposed to come from there. I don't know if this arrangement's correct, there may be another um, mechanism or, or component that's missing off this. But um, I've attached a spring to this point, and I think there may be another spring like this should come from here uh, to the same point. And I'm um, not quite sure what this lever does yet, but uh, we'll have a look at that later on. Um, might just ring the bell at the end of the, uh, the carriage travel. But um, what happens now is when I press the plunger to start the operation, you'll see the lever that wasn't coming all the way up is now coming high enough that um, it can be captured by this lever and you'll see it click into place and it's pulled into position by the spring. So I push the lever the um, plunger down, you can see it's now captured and this top plate is now underneath the little um, protruding part of the side lever. So it now will stay in divide mode. If I start turning the a gear it will stay in divide and it's now subtracting uh, continuously from the top number and presumably when it um, uh, provides a carry it will start this shaft rotating and um, that will cause it to move the carriage along. Uh, it also appears that this lever here is um, seems like the divide only works on half of the machine so I think the, the carriage has to be in a certain starting point for it to work correctly. This um, lever is operated by one of the carry um, fingers so I think at some point uh, this will operate to terminate the operation or if we press the um, cancel uh, division uh, button which didn't do anything before if you recall it was just flopping around. If I press it now while the machine is turning I need to put the circuit back on here of course, it's just uh, flopping about at the moment. If I press this um, button down, you can see it cancels the division and uh, that will allow the machine to terminate the current cycle so the gear is now free to spin again. Uh, I'll just do that again, I'll press the plunger down and it seems to capture the uh, current operation. So it's now captured the divide operation and this lever is now captive. Um, spin the gear and it's continuously delete, uh, de subtracting uh, numbers and if I push this uh, lever down it will cancel the operation uh, as long as the motor is still turning. So it's continuously subtracting numbers and if I press this uh, lever down then it cancels the operation which I think is the way it's supposed to work. I just need to figure out um, what's going on here and uh, see if um, it does actually complete a division successfully. So next thing I'll do is put a, a circlip on here so that the mechanism is being held in its correct location. I think this um, number that's showing on here just shows the uh, status of the divide operation. Um, and um, what I'll do is I'll move the carriage across and try it. Uh, in division with the carriage in its home location then it should do a single division and hopefully stop so um, we'll see if that's working correctly uh, if it is we can move on and try multiplication but um, I need to as I say try and figure out what's going on with this and what this lever is meant to be for okay so a bit more playing about with this and um, I was saying that I thought this uh, lever here uh, was hit by the carriage when the carriage got to its home location to terminate the operation and sure enough if we move the carriage manually you can see that as it gets to the end of its travel it hits this lever and uh, I think it's this screw here that's protruding through and it hits this and it causes this to move across. Um, when that moves across then it's going to allow this uh, cam to uh, hit on the raised portion, push this back and that releases this lever, same as pushing this button here, it releases it and uh, terminates the operation. So um, we're making progress, I haven't figured out what this does yet, 
um, but because at this point it moves this uh, little uh, bell striker, there's not many bell sits on here, I think all this is for is just to ring the bell to tell you that the division has finished. Division can take uh, quite a long time if you're dividing a very big number by a fairly small number. It could probably take an hour or more to do the uh, division, uh, at which point it'll ring a bell. Now, I suspect this machine won't be the quietest machine, so um, um, I'm not sure if the bell is really necessary. As soon as the horrendous noise stops, I'm pretty sure it would be an indication that um, the operation is complete. But I suppose if you're running uh, lots of these uh, in the same environment then you wouldn't know which particular machine has stopped or started so uh, having the bell at the end of the cycle is likely to uh, uh, let you know what's going on. So it, I've got a feeling this is supposed to have a spring going from here down to this point and the spring was not supposed to be connected across here. Uh, and also this um, lever here is also used to terminate um, the operation uh, once it gets to a certain point in its travel. OK, so I'll get a circuit fitted on here and then we can uh, give it a go and um, hopefully in the next video we'll be able to show it doing uh, division and multiplication successfully.